All right, Buzz Buzz Babies, I am here with Jeremy on, a sort of local. Um, you're you're sort of a local one. Like you're, yeah, where, where are you? You live in Missouri, right? Yeah, I live in Joplin. Joplin, okay. So not, not a terrible hop, skip, and a jump for you to it's get like here. A, it's like a hop, skip, a jump, another jump. <laughs> but there. Now, um, you are just, a, and you got a beautiful display here. You got the new anthology out, um, and it was a, such a such a beautiful book. Um, wonderful stickers and everything you got done. You did a really good job uh, just printing that, making uh, just a very beautiful, wonderful package, which is crazy because inside of it is absolute pure nightmare fuel. Um, and, you know, so, so beautiful, but your art, man, is so detailed and, and lovely and, and, and a, in a horrific way. Right. Um, but like, when, how, first of all, how dare you write that good and draw that good? Like, you, you gotta save some sauce for, for the competition, right? You're just, you're, you're, you're all, you're too much all at once. What do you, you know, I, I started out mostly just drawing comics. Okay. And, uh, and then, you know, my friends started getting angry with me when they're like, you know, the, my writer friends specifically started getting angry because they're like, wait, you can't, you can't, you can stay in your lane. You're supposed to draw. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, what's really weird, I think, is when, you know, as, as a kid, I thought a lot about, you know, the idea of, I just told stories, you know, mm -hmm. like, like it was always a thing where I would write and draw my own comics. And I didn't really ever make a delineation there at all. And then I got older and I was drawing comics because it was absolutely what I wanted to do. I, you know, I, I remember when, um, you know, when, when Image Comics had come out and there was, there was a, a wild storm contest mm -hmm. to try to get in and, 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 you know, be the next wild storm artist. And, you know, I, I didn't do that. I, I, I think I draw a notebook paper, something like that. <laughs> but, but I think that, that that was me realizing that I wanted to devote myself to being an artist. And, and somewhere in there, I stopped writing at the same time. But as time went by, I realized that I missed it so much. And I, I, I had stories that I wanted to tell, and I was constantly making notes. Oh, this story that eventually I'll get to. But then... You know, I mean, fast forward, and I'm, I'm older now, and I'm like, well, if I don't start actually, you know, writing my own stuff and writing and drawing my own stuff instead of just being an artist, uh, I was going to miss out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I'm glad you're not missing out. Now, I, it, it's interesting to me how, you know, you've, you've done Red Mother, um, and, and you did The Beauty, uh, and, and now you've got The Approach from Boom. Right. And so you're, you're getting these gigs, like good, solid gigs from, from you know, indie nice indie publisher right right um but this you you recently took to kickstarter to, to crowdfund the hauntology right um and and like i mentioned man that you, i can't say enough good things about that book how beautiful it is how great the shorts are or did you try to pitch it anywhere or i mean what made you do what made you go to crowdfund um i think that was part of of the time during the pandemic where i realized that you know, look, the comics industry, we were, we, everybody, all of us were in a bad way during that time. We went pencils down as an industry. Uh, you know, books were not able to be distributed. We were trying to figure things out. We are trying to survive. And I made Hanthology in a, in the spirit of just, you know, connecting with my audience in the way that I could. I was putting stuff out there in a time where stuff wasn't really coming out. I was, I was putting these short stories out as a way to, I mean, it was therapy in a way for me. Um, you know, there's, there is a thing in the industry that we run into where people are like, anthologies don't sell, but we keep doing them and we really do love them. But I wanted to do something that was me telling a series of short stories, having a good time with it and just kind of letting it be what it needed to be. But I wanted to get it out yeah. to my audience pretty much exclusively. So I actually said, I want to do this in a crowdfunded way. So it's still very personal. It's still me connecting with this group of people. Like we did this together, mm -hmm. you know, and now later after that, you know, I did take it to image. Like it, it will be produced as a, soft cover oh, cool. edition it's stripped down like it's it, it's the, the hardcover edition is still the special edition it's you know it's that your, your the first look for your first your your audience 
but um but it's something that that i wanted to do exclusively i guess not exclusively now because i'm saying that we're doing it <laughs> but but first with you know with my kickstarter audience now i've i've seen you sell a couple copies um at, at the table uh for 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 passersby you know what's your they they see this this very sexy hardcover it's got a, you got a couple different flavors of it right you different variants um and if they if they ask you like what's your what's your quick table pitch on why they should buy this book uh so Anthology is a collection of 26, 26 short stories dealing with the emotions that we felt during the pandemic. These are horror stories that are not about COVID or anything like that, but they're the things that we felt, the, the, the isolation, the loneliness, the anger, the fear, I told us monster stories. And um, it was me using horror as therapy during one of the toughest times in my and all of our lives, I've, I've I've talked to a couple horror writers now, and and this idea of like the the therapeutical narrative in horror like keeps popping up, and I've I've yet to meet a horror writer that's just a a prick. Like you guys are you you all have like a, a generous demeanor. You're approachable. You're excited to talk about writing and talk to your fans. Do do you think that like that's because of you guys get your your anger and your issues and 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 your fears out on the page for everybody to see and it and it you know takes some of the emotional weight off your shoulders that life piles on. Like, is it does it help like that? I think very much so. I mean, the the, the truth of it is, most of the people you know, like like you always hear the thing about like, oh, this horror writer. I bet you they're going to be a really screwed up person. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd hear about Stevie King back in the day, Clive Barker, and all this stuff, and then you you. you see interviews with these people and you're like well they're just like dudes they're sweet you know even by um the horror community is amazing on the whole like fans create other creators it's such a joyous community and i do think that we are using horror to exercise those demons those those things we're you know the best horror the pure version of horror is us talking about social issues getting those things out there or you know Night of the Living Dead is about zombies but it was also about racial issues during the time you know and, and it, so we're talking about things that are important to us that we need to but have you know monsters that'll eat your face and stuff along the way <laughs> what what in like um you, you you mentioned like Stephen King who who are some inspirations for you whether like uh, for whether like movie makers or, or other writers, like where do you pull your horror inspiration from when you're telling your stories? Uh, I've talked about it a little bit, but I think this is always important to hit on is that whenever I was a kid, I was terrified of everything. I was so like, like, you know, you'd, you'd get a, you'd get a, a trailer for a movie that would hit the TV and I would be cowering in the corner. <laughs> I specifically remember the movie Magic. It had Anthony Hopkins in it. Yeah. It's got a, a dummy, a, you know. But there, that trailer is one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. I think I was pretty emotionally scarred by movie trailers, horror movie trailers, as a kid. And I was so scared that I decided at a point that I couldn't, I either was going to, like, basically never sleep again, or I was going to have to watch Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> and so I went and ended up watching every horror movie at our little video store from A to Z. It wasn't everything because it was a little video store, but there was a lot of horror movies there. <laughs> and that I learned to love for. I learned that the monsters were metaphor and I learned that they were cool and they were cool looking and they were scary, but that was awesome. And then I started looking, you know, for more, for other things. I, like I said, you know, finding the short stories, especially from Stephen King eventually finding Clive Barker and, and you know, uh, uh, Dean Koontz and, and Peter Straub especially was 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 a big inspiration. Um, you know, uh, in all of those those movies, though, like, you know, like finding John Carpenter's films was a huge thing. You know, like everything from The Thing to, you know, Assault on Precinct 13, which is not a horror story, but it is a horror story in a way. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Halloween is arguably my... No, no, being arguably. How about that? It's it's my favorite. It's probably my favorite horror movie of all time. But um, you know, and then like even um, you know, I get a lot of it. You know, now uh, I reading horror manga is is a huge thing for me. Like uh, Junji Ito's yeah. work is 
<laughs> is one of the best things out there. Uh, and, and, and in horror fiction, horror prose right now, uh, Laird Barron is a, is a, a horror writer. Uh, Nathan Ballingrud, uh, John Langan. Um, you know, I I actually got to meet and sort of talk with, uh, especially like Laird Barron and and uh, Nathan Ballingrud. Uh, Nathan wrote the the foreword for Hauntology, and uh, you know, and these these guys are they they create things that get under my skin, and you know, as somebody that was terrified as a kid of everything now as an adult I want to feel like that kid again I want to be scared so anybody that can kind of make me feel that way a little bit I love just unabashedly it's it's funny how the things that terrified us as children like invigorate us now right and in, in, in a new and exciting way and speaking of new and exciting you've got the approach out from boom yes. which I love I love the the carpenter-esque um, you know, the, 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 there's there's tons of snow. We're we're in a abandoned facility, and uh, people are getting knocked off one by one, and 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 now there's like cultish shenanigans and all. It's there. You've got so much blossoming out. Like I I can tell there's a carpenter inspiration, but there's also like it's very very Jeremy Hahn, very unique to you. Uh, very great horror in comics. Like good. Dude, jump scares are hard to pull off in comics, right? But, like, you do some really cool stuff with page turns and the monster reveal and, and how that changes and, the, you know, the, the darker, you know, kind of muted colors that, that where anything could be hiding in right. any panel, right? Um, and that's You've got one issue left of that? One, one issue left. Issue five is coming out in a week. Oh, okay, soon. Very soon, cool. very soon. Very cool. Wow, that's exciting because I'm on Boom's press list, so I'll, I'll be getting that ah. sooner than later. Um but yeah, I just I am I'm loving that, and I'm excited to to see that in. And I feel like I've been you know I creep on other reviews to see what the competition's saying. Right, right. I feel right. like people people are digging it. It's, yeah. it's a good it's it's a good horror title. Um, with with the success of that and and working with Boom, um, what do you think? What is it that makes your horror stories stand out amidst the competition? Um, I'm just. I'm never trying to figure out what's hot right now or, you know, which maybe I should, I don't know, if I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm just telling the kinds of stories that I love. And if I, I just want, again, I just want to feel like that little kid. I just, I, I want to examine the things that creep me out and upset me and excite me, you know, and, and I have... I, I I found a larger horror mythology in my work, you know, uh, while doing, um, I did this project, Bad Karma, with B. Claymore, Seth Peck, and, and uh, Alex Grecian years ago. And while we were doing it, we talked a lot about, like, thin places in reality and the way that this world and this story can blend into this thing. And I started realizing that I had been interested started building a mythos that I wasn't initially aware of in my work that and you can look at stuff in the red mother or 40 seconds or the realm or the approach or now hauntology yeah. and you'll start seeing little connecting things the the way that uh, certain chants that people do in different cults are the same thing. Are they calling the same things? You know, does this connect to this? You know, there is a red mother element in the approach, and by you know, so so we're we're seeing the way that that connects. I love that. That excites me. That's something that I feel like is unique in in a way. It's it's it's. I mean, you know, there's there's so many talented people working in horror fiction. You know, uh, you know, uh, Colin Bunn. Is, is a friend that, that writes costly, amazing horror stuff. I think we're all just having fun doing this, and, you know, it's, I'm just uh, going to keep it up. Well, I'm glad that you have fun terrifying the shit out of me because I sure enjoy being terrified by your stories. Uh, Jeremy, this was awesome. Like, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to meet you, um, and, and uh, it was so great to talk to you. 